I think that's the beauty of discipleship, and that's what we need, is that we need the church to be the church, to equip yeah. us for the work of ministry, to, to help us become mature. And it's scary, and it exposes your weaknesses, because it can be terrifying to tell somebody, I need help being holy. Right. But that's even a, a part of being holy. In talking about holiness, I think it would be uh, really helpful and encouraging to also talk about the place that discipleship has mm -hmm. in our pursuit of holiness. Um, for me, I came to faith when I was 19, and I went to a church that was really um, happy about gifts, mm -hmm. and so they they put me in position. <laughs> yeah, they put me in positions of leadership before my character was even ready for that. And it's because, oh, you can communicate well, you can teach, so let me give you a mic in the Bible. And it's like, but I still haven't even learned to read it right yeah. or even believe it and live it out until I got connected uh, with the woman who ended up disciple discipling me for a season. And I remember she told me, she said, Jackie, you're on your way to being a very popular hypocrite. Ooh, and she said, it's wow. because you're gifted where you can communicate truth in such a way where Somebody people will, that. yeah. <laughs> she said, you can communicate truth in such a way where people will believe that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. She was like, but it's my task in your life to make sure that your message and your life match. Yeah. And so I lived with her for two years where that was a day to day thing, wow. where we would get in the text yeah. and whatever I read, she would make sure I applied it. You remember we read James three about the tongue? Did you did you apply? Like, would you think about Jesus? <laughs> Were you thinking about Jesus when you said what you said? And so it wasn't just teaching, but also accountability, right? And I, I, I've told people consistently, my ministry is the fruit of discipleship. And so I guess, big picture, what is discipleship and why do we need it to be holy? I love discipleship. It's near and dear to my heart. And... Um, uh, God has been faithful in showing me how to make room for, for that in my life because it's not optional. You know, it's a commission, not a suggestion. It's right. like you must do it. Right. So to me, it is very much um, taking what I, what I, the news of the gospel, this good news, and living it out in my life and then investing that in the life of another and saying, here's what the gospel has looked like in my life. Right. I don't approach discipleship feeling like I need to cover the entire Bible. Right. The Lord brings people right. in my path that generally right. line up with my giftings, my passion, my calling. Right. And, and I usually share with them things that have shaped my life. I tend, I love inside out, lay crap jacked my whole life. I love knowledge of the holy. I love pursuit of God. I love, so I just say these are things that were right. pivotal for me. And, and when you leave me, you may need, you may have another disciple, right. but, but this is my, this right. is what God's asked me to invest in you. And I think, right. um, that has been so good for me because even in my investing, right, I'm growing. And right. so he keeps showing me that right. this is the only way to live. And, and you can have really gifted people, like Jackie said, or people who are in great churches or have made some great decisions for God. And there's no water in this soil with this seed. And so it's just, right? So it's, it can just sit there. Right. It can be, it can right. stagnate, you know? Um, and I think it's dangerous to, to, to focus yeah, on the moment of surrender, right. that the salvation commitment, and then just leave it to be whatever. I think we also need to talk about kind of the, um, and discipleship. You know, I grew up in so many different discipleship ministries, mm -hmm. and they all had a different template, and some had a different agenda. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I think I was in my thirties that I thought that wasn't discipleship. That was actually manipulation and me being forced into a mold because oh. homogeny mm -hmm. and replication was, was the goal. And now I go, I want somebody who's, who their, their biggest theme in my life. And I always have a, I think scripture, this is real simplistic, this is the way I think, is I always want a Paul. So I want a Pauline, somebody older and wiser, more mature in the Lord to walk with. And then I always want a, a Timet. And I always want a Timothy, real simplistic, but I want a couple of Timets and then a couple of, of Paulines um, for, for me to learn, for me to model after. But ultimately, I've got to be under Pauls who are wise enough to go, don't model after me. You 
You model after Jesus. The whole point here is for you to look more like Jesus. So you may sit on your hands during musical worship or raise your hands. You may, it's not about that. It's not about, um, um, sometimes we make it about our preferences instead of about actually sanctification. And so I think find people who will disciple you, do life with you. I think it's amazing you lived in her home. We have made discipleship run into a coffee shop and, you know, mm -hmm. talking about stuff, sometimes it doesn't really matter. And I think you do life, you do fun, you, but you make sure you have some depth in that with somebody who will say you're on your way to becoming a very popular hypocrite. And, and, I, and I think to that point, I think that speaks to, she had the margin for that. That's right. So she was a single woman. Mm -hmm. She was the director of the women's ministry at the church. And so she had margin to disciple uh, on a deep level. Yeah. I don't. You know, I have three children, a husband, and a dog, right? And so I've actually had to alleviate myself of the pressure of replicating that same kind of discipleship uh, when somebody was like, Jackie, disciple your kids. Right. Yeah. And so I think there's, there's, that's even a thing yeah. where it's like, I'm over here discipling people yeah. via Instagram yeah. and I ain't read the Bible with my daughter in two right. weeks. And so I have to remind myself like, no, like you are her greatest discipler right. as her parent. And so. You keep the main thing, the main thing, but whatever it looks like and they all different during different seasons. I mean, quite frankly, I pay for my discipleship right now because the, the, wisest older sister in my life is a Christian counselor. And and the answers are in God's word, but where I've been wounded or abused, um, it's like my mind gets smaller and my heart gets fearful. And I can't always apply the redemptive nature of God's word to those places. So with an older, older godly woman who is really an older sister in the faith and goes, do you think that's actually her Her whole sole purpose is for me to continue growing in Christ-likeness? And so it, it will look different for all of us, but I think you really have to have, you have to be in community. Mm -hmm. I think it's, and I'm going to say this just because I'm old. It is not enough to watch church on your iPad. Now, there are some people who, because of comorbidities or whatever during COVID, that, that you do have to do that. But I travel for work. I'm kind of a traveling evangelist. And, you know, I don't think I've been to a church in the last six months where church was open that they said, we're back to our same numbers. I was with a pastor two days ago, and he said, our giving is great. We're so grateful people are giving. But he said, we're running about half of what we were running before COVID. And he said, the people are engaged. They just now have gotten really comfortable being engaged from the couch. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's not okay if... If you're in an area where COVID isn't, I mean, obviously there's some qualifications to that in light, of, in light of a global pandemic. But if you're in a place where you can gather with the saints physically, it, it doesn't do it for me to just be in corporate worship on an iPad. I need sisters speaking into me. I need Bible study with other believers. And so I think you need community. You need a, a few people who are older and wiser and who have no agenda, mm -hmm. who don't work for you, who don't want to be you, who want you to be conformed to the image of Christ. And then you need a few younger people. You may not have the bandwidth for them to live with you. you it may be once a month. You meet them for two hours and you, I do a lot of walk praying. Mm -hmm. And so women who go, will you disciple me? I go, no, because I'd be a, a terrible discipler <laughs> because I don't, I don't have the time. I travel all the time. But I said, I will meet you once a month at Radnor and we will walk and pray and we will go into a really deep place. So I think it can look all different ways, but we really need to be in that iron sharpening iron kind of place. Y y yes. And if you approach it, like this is not optional, right. this is an imperative of and the you're Lord, right. it's not optional. then it's a you trust him to make space right. and, and show you what your priorities right. are. I, I did it one way before kids. And then when kids came, I'd right. take a little break and we right. did it another way. I was right. like, we starting late. I hope y'all night owls, because after everybody go to bed right. at 8.30, right. then y'all can come over. Right. But I did want them in my space. I wanted sure. them to see my husband's shoes on the floor and if I was yeah. gonna stay godly, you know? And I wanted it when he came in and whatever, that that for me was a part of it too. So it, the way your disciple did it, it is very much truth in life, right? It's this applied truth. What does it mean to not just know the scripture, but to live it out? And I think God will show you what that can look like in your life. You may have a cousin or a sister or a friend that he wants you to start with. That's you right. might not need a big group That's and right. a curriculum and all of that. It is just yeah. a commitment to 
to really be a funnel. Like this, like, right. this is what God gives me. Right. I take it, I grow in my own sanctification, and then I, I invest in the lives of others. Because he says, basically, that's how the gospel goes forward. So right. it's not like a ministry you sign up for. Like right. he's saying, no, this is how replication happens. Yeah. In different seasons of life, you may be afforded different things, or right. you may say, I'm not able to do that same type of thing, right. but now I can do this right over here, right. you know? And so just even as we're speaking, I'm like, okay, Lord, like what is my role right now, right. you know? And you, you've you seen some of the, the kids who, you know, you know, you know friends, yeah, but, but it's, it was kind of like hers, except to where they didn't live with me, but it's like, no, what did the word say? What did we just talk about right there? Right. So how do you match your life with it, not make right. it match with you, right. that type of a thing? Right. But like now I'm in a different space, and my kids aren't involved in that because my kids are grown. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, okay, Lord, I, I hear you telling me what it is that you want me to do. And I think for all of us, there's something different that he may have us to do that may not be what we were doing before. It may be better. It may be right. in a different facet. Different. It might be a different yeah. age group. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, just as I'm sitting here, I'm just like, okay, Lord, like show me. And we all have influence. So we, we're we all, dis, you know, discipling people who, According to, them, to other people may say, oh, you're already doing it. You know, you're when you're posting in your books and in your talks and in your, right. but we know. I mean, right. like who's allowed in my space? Absolutely. Who's allowed to observe me? Who's right. allowed to walk with me right. so that I can, you know. I have often them. thought of the, the man whose friends took up a corner of his mat, yeah. carried him to the roof mm -hmm. and lowered him to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love that story. I love so many facets of that story, but just the practical, logical aspect of that story is he had four people who's close enough to ask. Mm -hmm. He had four people close enough to go, I, I can't carry the weight of my own life. Mm -hmm. I need to get closer to Jesus. I need help. Mm -hmm. And I think we live in this culture with a whole lot of presumed community mm -hmm. because you've got so many likes. I'm like, those right. people don't know you. Don't know they you, don't. you have to have four people at least. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've got eye to eye with it. You can go, I need yeah. you to pray for me because I'm dying today. Yeah. And, and we were meant to run toward Jesus in community. And <laughs> I'll say just real practically speaking, you know, I didn't become a mom until I was 50. And I think I've made every mistake known to motherhood. It has been such a generous gift from the Lord. But the places where I've mothered well, it's because I've watched other mothers, other Christian mothers, even and sometimes I was older chronologically, but they invited me to do life with them. They said, come on over to our house for Thanksgiving. I watched you at Thanksgiving. I watched the way you loved your kids. I watched the way you loved people who were, who were extended family. And some of the things I've been able to emulate to the glory of the Lord, it's because somebody else modeled it for me. And as a single woman, I've watched women who are married. I've watched the way they love their husbands. Even if I never have a physical husband, God says he's the husband of the husband. I have to know how to be a bride. And so a lot of the places where I have grown closer to Jesus, where I've matured a bit spiritually, is because somebody was, was gracious enough and intentional enough to say, come do this chapter of life with me. Come walk with me for a season. And so any of you, I think all of us, can extend some measure of a gift of relationship to say, come on, it's going to look a little different, but come on and do a little life with me and let's, let's move toward Jesus together. And, and you can't talk about holiness and the fact that we're not pursuing it the way we should and people are this and if you're not discipling <laughs> because that means I'm, I'm trying to be obedient to help right this ship, right? Yeah. So you can't expect that people are just going to find it, figure it out all on their own because we didn't. I mean, somebody had to shape us. And so I think it dovetails well with what we've been talking yeah, about all I week. I not only that, didn't find it, I needed to be corrected. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I found what I thought was right. it. Right. Was, right. Yeah. It was fool's gold. I have a question to that point, though, because y'all are older than me. And so I think that you have an encouragement that I can't offer, um, which is when I've spoken into spaces about the need for older women to teach the younger, which Titus 2 says, um, what I've heard is that many older women feel incompetent mm -hmm. in their ability to serve younger women. Uh, how do you encourage them to know that you don't have to be cool right. nor perfect to serve? Or be able to exegete Greek or Hebrew. Right. Like what, what is the advice um, there? Years ago, and Lori will say 
something wiser because she's sweeter <laughs> than me. But but um, years ago, a woman that, that Nicole and I used to get to do ministry with on the road, she said, Lisa, um, women aren't interested in where you got it right. They're interested in where you got it wrong That's and God true. redeemed your story. Right. So I'd say the biggest issue is that to not think you're the role model. Right. It's Jesus is the role model. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, I think the best thing we can do is just to testify of the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things that happened 30 years ago that I didn't understand for 30 years, and maybe right. I just got right. last week. Right. You know, right. but yeah. I think the older you get, the more I have experienced the faithfulness of God, mm -hmm. that He does come through every time in a way that He knows, yeah. mm -hmm. that He purposes, yeah. that I might have never understood the hard things in life that I didn't know right. or why that was happening to me. Yeah. Um, but God knew mm -hmm. and God took care. And now I can look back right. on the history yeah. of just trusting, mm -hmm. even when I failed, even when right. it felt like a failure. Yeah. And I can tell you about the goodness mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and that's kind of all of our stories. Yeah. That's what Better Together Kind of, that was what that was birthed out of. Yeah. I wanted to get my friends, the ones who just, y'all you know, have such beautiful gifts and to mentor people, yeah. the older and the younger, yeah. you know, yeah. and and if, if, if they don't have a place to go, if you are locked up, if you are whatever your circumstances right. and you could tune in mm -hmm. and get Jada speaking into right. your life and disciple and Lisa right. and you and Nicole and, you know, and, and hear a voice that would sure. speak to your heart, you yeah. know, and resonate and, and help guide people that just don't know what to do right now. That's right. There's a lot of that. People are, people are, I think, even coming through what we have in the last year and a half, two years, they're just traumatized. There's a yeah. lot of traumatized and people. Tired. There's a lot of tired, people that yeah. need some therapy, yeah, and that's what this right here that's right. is all about. That's right. And that's what this right here is about, you that's know, right. and just telling them, maybe we didn't do right. But, but this is how God right. covered me. Right. Right. This is his Absolutely. grace that yeah. empowered me. And right. this is the season that yes, he got me redemption. through, even yeah. in times when I didn't yeah. get it. Y'all know in Joshua you know. 2, where, um, you know, at the beginning of, their, of the wilderness wanderings, God said, just, just sit on the banks. You don't have to do anything. Quit being so loud. Just watch me do it. Mm -hmm. Then he spends all that time with them. And they get to the Jordan and it's at flood stage. And he says, this time you don't just observe the miracle, you have to participate mm -hmm. in it. And they had to get their feet wet. And then he dried up the Jordan. And when they walked through on dry land, you remember he said, take the stones from the Jordan and make this Ebenezer, make this stone memorial. So in the future, mm -hmm. when your kids say, what did Yahweh do for you? You can go, let me tell you about the seas he's dried up in my life. As an, as an older uh, Christ follower, Here's what I bring to the table. I have more rocks because I can go, let me tell you, I've been walking with Jesus for 52 years. I've never seen God's back. I have been an idiot. I've been a sinner. I've been faithless. I've been an idolater. I've been unkind. I've been, let me tell you how he disciplined me and was faithful and he was holy and he was pure and he was good. I just have more rocks because mm -hmm. I've lived longer. And I think sometimes to be able to have a discipler or a mentor who will say, he's got you. Mm -hmm. He's got you because he carried me in a season when I couldn't walk. To Jackie's question about how to encourage women, there, there has to be a valuing of your story, right? If you, if you don't see your story as valuable and divine, valleys and victories that, that God allowed or approved various things in your story, you don't see it as necessary to share. And so, you know, when you look at the, the end of Luke and then the beginning of Acts, both authored by Luke, and you see these parallels with Jesus is talking about this, the Holy Spirit and Jerusalem, what you're doing. And one, he's like, I want you to be, go, go make disciples. Yeah. And Acts, he says, I want you to be my witnesses because that's, that's right. really what it is. Right. I don't need you to be a lawyer. I don't need you to argue for me. I just need you to testify. And what's interesting is they were going to be obviously in that season 
literal witnesses. They saw right. the resurrection and the right. ascension. But, but I talked about this last night with my ladies in Bible study. Some witnesses are, are there because they witnessed what happened. They saw it. Mm-hmm. But there's some people who are expert witnesses, and they didn't see the crime, but they so know the subject matter. Yeah. Their testimony still holds weight in court. And so even the, the resurrection and ascension, things that are pivotal to our faith that we didn't see, I'm going to tell you what we saw. That's You're right. an expert on Jesus mm-hmm. Christ in your life. Yeah, you are right. an expert witness. And so if you yeah. value your story and you don't see it as optional, which I keep saying, then you will believe that God has equipped you yeah. with, with wherever you yeah. are and what you know. And here's what he does. He will bring people across your path that need your story. Yeah. They need That's what you've true. been through. That's and they need your level of expertise. Um, and, and another thing, Every woman is older than somebody. That's exactly. Our middle schoolers are discipling, exactly our high schoolers. Right. Every person needs to feel like, who am I constantly pouring yeah, into? Certainly. And so at any age, you're older than somebody. Sometimes it's age, sometimes it's just in your journey. Right. And your story is valuable. Right. And so you, if you believe that this is an imperative, this is how God has chosen right. to spread the gospel through the earth, right. then the question is not, should I? The question is, God, how Will you equip me to right. do this? Will you show me the people or the right. person? Maybe it's family, maybe it's a stranger. Right. Make, make the provision, show me, you know, your providence, lay it out and then be willing to say yes. So because we need it. And listen, so I'm a, this is my platform. Corporate discipleship is not the business. Mm-mm. Everybody cannot get it from scrollable, repostable, the things that I need, to, most of the things I need to pour into somebody or I need poured into me, I cannot fit it into something postable. Mm-hmm. You know, every discipleship meeting shouldn't be, in my opinion. I mean, it can be, but it's like there are young people that are not going to come and say, I just want to sit at your house and have a Bible study. Right. It might be, let's do life together. Or right. I bake. So come and as right. I'm baking cookies, I can show you. That's or right. I like to do this right here. Like teach what you know. What's your gift? Right. You know what I'm saying? And in that gift, in that living, in that doing life, you know, show them how, the, how their lives are to match with the scriptures. This is what the scripture Listen, says. My DIY know? discipleship. Yeah. I have gotten so much stuff done. These yeah. are like, I want you to say, come on, girl, do my patio yes. today. Come exactly. on. We do That's it. I get projects done. That's a in part the name of the Jesus. Great Commission. <laughs> exactly. Is that literally when he says, go therefore, he's saying, as you go, yeah, exactly. as you move through life, yes. make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And then when you observe yes. Jesus' life, the disciples were with him. Not all of them all the time. But they were able to observe and learn. And I, I think that DIY, that's a, that's a real good phrasing of it, is good because when I moved to Chicago, uh, by that time I'm married, I have one daughter. And so I, di- I needed a different degree of discipleship. And so I connected with another woman who's a mother, a wife, all the things. And she would just say, just come over. Yeah. And so she, and my expectation is we're going to open up the Bible. And she out with her doing laundry. Yeah. Yeah. She giving her yes. kids a bath. Exactly. But she told me, she, she said, the Lord said, just live out your life in right. front of right. Jackie. Right. And there was this one exchange that was real um, helpful and convicting to me. I ain't gonna say her name. Her husband be talking a lot sometimes. <laughs> and we were like, <laughs> we were like at dinner and at no point did she ever disrespect him or cut him off. Yeah. And I just, I just, I just noticed her. She just tapped his knee. Oh, I was like, wow. Like that, that just made the res- respect your husband come alive for me. I was like, and that's holiness. Like she, she trained me just by being impulsively godly to be a good wife. She ain't say none of that, but I saw it. And then when I read the text, I saw the connection. And so I think that's the beauty of discipleship. And that's what we need is that we need the church to be the church, to equip us for the work of ministry, to to help us become mature. And it's scary Mm -hmm. and it exposes your weaknesses because it can be terrifying to tell somebody I need help being holy. But that's even a a part of being holy. (laughs) And we're all a part of that. (laughs) Exactly. And so, hey, lean into it, lean into community. So let's pray for the for the saints. Uh, God, thank you for um, your kindness and that 
You did not just save us as individuals, uh, but you saved us and then united us with other people. Um, and so we thank you for your visible church. We thank you that uh, you have given us the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have given us teachers and apostles and prophets and people with the gift of hospitality, administration and healing and mercy, um, all for the building up uh, of your church until we uh, attain that unity and that maturity. And I pray God just for all the things that are trying to keep us divided, uh, that we would be one as you and the Father are one so that the world would believe that you were sent. And so we pray, God, just for courage to disciple and the courage to be discipled. We pray for the wisdom to disciple and the wisdom to be discipled and that through all of this, we would become a holy people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.